Hello, everyone. Welcome to my Module 11 teaching memo. This will be my last teaching memo. Yay! I can hear you all clapping now. Um, the Easter and Passover break is over, and there is only one week left. It's cold and rainy up here in Dutchess County. I was excited when I thought spring had arrived. Now I'm bummed. <laughs> uh, okay, some housekeeping. The course ends on Sunday, May 5th at midnight. I will be closing my grade book on the following Friday. So you have five days to, to get stuff done if you haven't uh, gotten it done yet. Um, so that will be on Friday, May 10th. Uh, Saturday, I will... Uh, hopefully I will have grade, graded mostly everything by then, but I will be, I will be grading any late work by that time. Um, if you are planning to take an incomplete, you must have completed at least 75% of the requirements of the course. Um, so I, I have a lot of assignments, so uh, that, uh, I'm not sure what that number is, but if you're planning on that, then I will check it out. Um, please contact me by email or phone. If this is a course of action you are contemplating, uh, it involves a contract which must be completed in approximately four weeks. I have closed the last discussion board and thought there were some very good discussions about the differences uh, between Mr. Jones uh, and Marissa and Miss W and Emily. Uh, this formative assessment slash grading discussion is a very crucial one to all current and prospective teachers. Remember, what Ms. W did was a process, assessment for learning. Formative assessment is a process as well, probing understanding and then modifying instructions or having students adjust their learning. Remember the mantra, where am I going? Learning targets, where am I now? How can I close the gap? Feedback and self-evaluation. Um, as I mentioned in my assignment video, make sure you watch that too. Uh, you need to check your grades and make sure all your assignments have been handed in. Um, I've just scrolled through both all three of my classes and there are some things that are missing. Um, uh, right now, many of you have, have made your initial post, almost all of you made your initial post in the discussion board, but haven't uploaded it to be checked by SafeAssign. So uh, make sure you do that. Um, many of you will be completing your revised selective response test and three-part analytic summary. Please be aware that there are still classmates submitting their tests on the revised selected response test discussion board. Please take a few moments during the next several days to check back, uh, check in, and, and take those tests of those latecomers. Uh, they will very much appreciate it, as will I. Um, module 11, many of you mentioned Marissa and as, as I knew you would, because there are many like Mr. Jones. Uh, unfortunately, some of them are at Turo College from uh, what you have written. <laughs> that bothers me, but um, uh, not much I can do about it. I've tried, but I can't. Several of you have mentioned, it always amazes me that professors who are training teaching candidates do not model good assessment practice. And that's because just like Mr. Jones, they are not aware of what good practice looks like. Um, I used the Marissa piece to activate your conversation about assessment for learning practices and have you go deeper than just comment on how bad Mr. Jones was. Uh, many of you had a comment for me, okay, don't just badmouth Mr. Jones, what should he have done? <laughs> um, and uh, so, that's what I was looking for, and uh, hopefully I probed for that and uh, you responded. Um, this was not my intention uh, about Mr. Jones, um, but it's why I shared the Emily video, to, so you could compare and react to that, um, how Ms. W compared with Mr. Jones. Um, there was uh, many good comments, good conversation about practice of docking students for late work. Um, many gave the rationale that it will encourage students, other students to be lazy or it won't teach responsibility, et cetera, et cetera. As most of you know by now, Dr. Tom strongly disagrees with that statement and advises everyone to create a culture of diversity in your classroom from the very first day. All of you, almost all of you have said at some point during this course 
that we need to differentiate instruction. Some of you said we need to differentiate assessment, um, but you struggle with differentiating your grading practices. There are many ways to have consequences for cheating and late work without docking kids with grades or giving them zeros. Punishing grades should not be part of that. The acceptance of late work and allowing students to do work over was mentioned often. A uh, few of you referred to Rick Wormelli's article and his videos. Um, there's another one. I put another one in uh, uh, module 12. Um, in, his, in his video about toxic grading practice, Reeves argued against averaging students' various attempts and do-overs, comparing it to a long-distance runner who doesn't get credit for his last best time because they averaged all his other ones. Um, uh, that seems easy when it's put that way, but you know, as in baseball, they average you from the very first day. <laughs> That's your average. <laughs> um, but he, there, he does make a point that if you're doing the same assignments, and this is where I come from, if you're doing the same assignments like our discussion boards, that you don't have to average the first, second, third, and fourth, that you can weight them differently, and as I do. My last discussion board, this one that just finished, is weighted the most. The same with the DEJs. The first one was not weighted as much as the last one. Um, so if you have an electronic, if you can wait in your electronic grade book, if you have one, I would recommend increasing the weights as the attempts grow more frequent. Of course, it's got to be the same uh, kind of assessment, and you have to be have given feedback along the way. Um, often, often, we don't see the power of allowing our students to do work over, but several of you mentioned it. You appreciated my practice of allowing do-overs. Just think how you feel when you know an assessment is not do or die and that if you miss something or make a mistake, you can go back and fix it. Just like in a real job. <laughs> That's the way it works. Those of you that talk about preparing kids for the real world, you get do-overs in the real world. Um, throughout this course, I brought up Ms. W's goal that everyone should get an A plus in this class which is my belief in all my courses. I mentioned in the discussion board that one semester, the lowest grade I gave was an A minus in how I was chastised by my supervisor, who's no longer with us, uh, for what he considered grade inflation. Whereas I thought I did an exceptional job teaching that semester and designing my course. He called it grade inflation. Wow, so much for my um, teaching high. Um, there was a good deal of conversation about feedback, especially the, this last week, and, following, and the following web articles were shared. You know, five research-based tips for providing meaningful uh, feedback, um, giving difficult feedback to parents, five research-based tips for providing students with meaningful feedback, and Wiggins's article that I think I uh, put in ancillary materials in some module, Seven Keys to Effective Feedback. So. Um, read these articles. Uh, they're very important. Um, many of you struggle with giving uh, supportive feedback instead of just good job feedback. I love the way you did it. it you just had a wonderful post. You did a wonderful test. Um, and meanwhile, I'm making all kinds of markups on it and thinking, what are they looking at? <laughs> so, um, all of these will be available in the teaching memo. I have links at the bottom of the, my teaching memo, and uh, you can access them. Finally, if there's anything you need to take away from this course, it is the power of formative assessment. If you remember back in Fisher and Fry, the article or the chapter we, uh, we connected to in the RTI module, the days of making lesson plans for the entire year are over. And we need to vary teaching in time so learning stays constant. We need to use formative assessment to guide us, reteach, re regroup, and allow students to adjust their learning as well. If you want to be a great, great or better teacher, learn how to use formative assessment. That's it. Um, I wish you all well. I'll be grading. I'll have my head down all week grading. Actually, for the next two or three weeks, I'll be grading. Uh, so... Get, this, get your work done and, and enjoy the summer.